What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Cesar, and we are talking about BCHG and LTCN in this video. Uh, I'm aware that I have a couple of other requests for Grayscale, but I'm not, I'm not going to do them tonight, you guys. I'm way past bedtime. I'm just making videos because uh, I had a late start tonight, and I, I, I know it's been a while since I've talked about Grayscale, so I want to talk about it. So so without giving excuses, let's just let's talk about it, right? So looking at Bitcoin Cash here, Grayscale Trust, BCHG, uh, if we look at it, kind of looks like an inverse head and shoulders, right? It actually looks very perfect to an inverse head and shoulders. Um, a slanted inverse head and shoulders at that, right? You've got the slanted bottoms, the slanted highs. I did think that it was pretty perfect with this low over here. I hope nobody's too discouraged with this price action going on over here. The volume still looks pretty well, still pretty damn perfect as far as the profile goes. Um, I would expect that if you move up to here that you will break out to the upside. It, it won't just be a phenomenal, or I shouldn't say phenomenal. It won't just be a nice move up to seven dollars but it will extend past that probably going up toward like 10 bucks or something like that that looks to be the measure move of this pattern more or less right some yeah probably around like 10 11 bucks something like that um what i did notice is that from this relative low to this relative high bitcoin cash bchg is right at the 61869 zone perfect area to find support right previous area of support right at the top of this gap here that you formed right there so general areas of support in mind besides just the golden ratio of this relative low to high here. So I do like this as an area to bounce, not just based off the pattern, not just based off the fib, but just it just it makes sense to me, right? Throughout the price action, it looks looks like the right area to bounce. But even beyond that, because I expect Bitcoin Cash, I don't know why it's loading like that, but I expect Bitcoin Cash to do well um, today, tomorrow, over the week. I think the BCHG, that'll translate over as well. So uh, if we look... You are a little bit lower right now than where you closed on Friday. Or maybe you're, you're probably right around there where BCHG closed on Friday. So I wouldn't think, even though it looks like, yeah, I mean, you did have a red day yesterday. You had a bearish engulfing candle, 2.4% to the downside, nothing crazy. You did close the day red yesterday. I don't think you're going to see any any drop off tomorrow. I bet, I bet that you stay here. I bet you even just move up, man. If you move down, I bet it's very, very, very insignificant, like so insignificant you can't really even tell. But I doubt you move down. I bet you move up. And really, BCHG, I think, is about to break out, move up to like 10 to $12. And then from there, it'll break out of this downward slope. I, I didn't mean to do that. It's going to break out of this downward sloping uh, consolidation phase it's in, right, with that breakout move. And that will just be the ignition to the next phase up, which I do believe will take you to new all-time highs, if not right around your current all-time highs. But I do believe it'll take you to new all-time highs. So BCHG looking frisky. Weekly RSI believe it or not is bullish right getting overbought and not getting oversold i don't care how how weak this looks right here technically overall you look very bullish so this is a sign of strength holding higher lows as well of course in your price getting lower lows in your rsi hidden bullish divergence that tends to happen in uptrends hidden bullish divergence means a continuation of the trend if you're at a higher low continuation would imply a higher high if you're going to see a higher high, you can base or predict your, your expected outcome based off of these uh, extension levels, which would be anywhere from like 3750 to, I mean, maybe 201, like all the way up there, 2272, you know, something like that could be where you, you, you place your next target. If we take this, the, your inverse head and shoulders that you have down here, by the way, this little zone, it kind of looks just like this inverse head and shoulders, right? It's kind of not not quite the exact same, but just kind of right. They've got that same kind of deep V, very tight look. I don't know, don't they? Like kind of. Anyways, um, <clears throat> from this high to this low, you topped off at your one six one eight area just below there, right? <clears throat> Sorry. From this high to this low, he topped off right above your 1618, just below the 1886, so around that 1618 both times. And then here, from this high to low, that might not be fair because that's such a small range. You went all the way up to your 3618, but you did tip it. You did tip the 3618, but that was that was a small range. Maybe it'd be better to take the big range, right? The big range is high to low. I definitely didn't expect that this consolidation would be as long as it is, but I think those private placement sales did have an impact, you guys. Uh, I really do, right? <clears throat> private private placement sales were here, unlocked here, right in the middle of the move, right? 
probably some pre-selling nature going on in, ex in expectation of these sales. Held off for a second, but then dumped as well afterwards. And that's it. That's it. You've, you've seen the worst of it. You actually held support at this high to low 1618 zone right there. Beautiful. Went all the way up to the 3618. That's crazy. Really, really deep extension. Anyways, <clears throat> based off of that, I think it's safe to assume that the minimum target from what we've seen so far has been very near the 1618 every single time. That'd be at $67. That'd be at new all-time highs. You spent all this time, $67, right? You spent all this time to barely get above your all-time highs? I don't think so. I don't think so. BCHD, guys. LTCN. <clears throat> Let's see. Here we are at $12, just below $12 there. Uh, weekly RSI is looking bullish as well, right? It is a good sign. You're actually even more bullish than BCHG's weekly RSI, to be fair. But it is bullish to be overbought without getting oversold, right? Your top of the top moves are getting you overbought, showing true strength. Your bottom of the bottom moves are not even getting oversold. You're not even showing true weakness in your most weak form, right? Like that's that is a strong uh, that is a sign of strength. Okay. If we look at the relative low here, the cycle low to the relative high that you have so far of this cycle, you did break below the 382. And you actually went and held the 0.5. You found resistance on the 382. I have to say that a look like this almost always results in the 61869. When I say almost always, I mean like 80% likely or more. Right. The only reason that I'd give it that it doesn't go down there is because for one, Litecoin to me doesn't look like it wants to drop that much. For two, Litecoin looks like it wants to move up. And for three, you already found resistance on the 382 and support on the 0.5, right? If this was the first time that you did this, I would say that this is very I'm I'm very perplexed and surprised that you didn't break below that 0.5. The fact that you've rejected the 382 a second time isn't necessarily a good thing, but it does, it does give me hopes that you'll find a higher low, that you might not even interact with the 0.5 and you might just turn around from here and that the next time you interact with this area, you, you likely would break it. But time will tell. We'll see how it goes. <clears throat> if I'm wrong and you move lower, 709 to 560 is where you're going and that would make sense for a few reasons. But it wouldn't make sense for, it, it wouldn't make sense for a lot more reasons. Um, so I don't, I don't personally think you're going to move down. Daily RSI, Looks bullish, actually. Um, neutral, but bullish. More bullish than bearish. You're at an area where it would be nice to bounce. Maybe you go down a little bit lower to start the week, maybe. But you don't have to. From a relative low to relative high, you're right at that 618 area. So again, you could go just a little bit lower, maybe. You could even go as low as like 11 bucks. But I doubt, I doubt you break too much below 11 bucks, if at all. You probably start moving up sooner than later. I would expect that LTCN's move up is directly correlated to Litecoin's move up, right? And if we look at LTC real quick, I mean, this thing, it's not the prettiest looking chart, let's be real, but it has been, it's its overdue for a move, right? And you do have a higher low based in this range, right? When it comes to moving up, I wouldn't expect that you stop here at this area that you found resistance several times already, that you found support already and, so, and resistance back here. I wouldn't expect that you stop here, right? I, I would expect that a lot of people would expect you stop here. And that's why, precisely why I would believe that you just blast right through the roof. So if this is where it all starts right here, I would assume LTCN is likely at the low of its move down here and it's getting ready for its next move. It's going to take it up here, right? You're at $12 now. But by the end of this next move, which who knows how long it takes, it could be anywhere from $88 to $162 or more, or more. It's hard to say. We don't have as many uh, ups and downs in this one as we did with Bitcoin Cash. But from this high to low right here, went all the way up to 2272, very small retracement range. So, of course, you get a deeper extension. A little bit bigger of a retracement range, still small, though. And you went right up to your 2272, right up there twice, literally twice. Perfect. From a high to a low. Based off of the two previous SIBs, which were small, the 2272 could be a safe assumption. That does put you right around your all-time highs, and that makes sense with Bitcoin Cash as well, right? BCHG, because that would be right around its all-time highs, as well as LTCN being around its all-time highs. Maybe. Maybe that could happen. Or, because this is a bigger FIP extension, I'll give you an answer that you like less. Maybe you don't see the 2272, because that, again, was off of smaller FIB extensions, right? You can't even see them, these like little ranges down here, based off of this, this big range right here. Maybe you don't see the 2272. Maybe you stop at the 1618, 12, 1272 expected area. 
Um, being that you found significance on the 2272 the last two times, being that this is a deeper range, perhaps you do find significance on the 1272. It does translate like that, right? Going from double extensions, triple extensions, quadruple extensions, they do tend to carry respect through levels like that. I, I don't know if that makes sense. It's not always that cut and dry, but just, you know, when, when you have no path mapped out and you're mapping it out for yourself, it's kind of good. I think it, if it doesn't make sense to go to the 2272, if it makes sense to go to a lower number, the, the 1272 to me would just make the most sense. But you're at 1199 now. All I'm trying to say, all that confusing nonsense to say, and it wasn't nonsense, but it might have sounded like nonsense. All that to say, I think that the minimum expected target for your next move whenever you break this high, the move that you're going to form, that, that you're in the middle of right now, whether it feels like it or not, but the, the end of this move at a minimum would be at $88, $262. Now, I don't believe this is where LTCN tops off. I don't believe that's where BCHG tops off. Whenever I was saying it, it tops off just, to, just above its all-time high. I just believe that this next move will be potentially like the second to last move that we have uh, for the rest of the cycle for BCHG and LTCN. So it's hard to say, but a move like this, you know, just based off of this trajectory, I don't know, like if, if it looks like that, if it's, if it's faster, if it's slower, right? However it looks, I just kind of tried to base it off of this, right? Same kind of growth trajectory. Move it over here, right? Pretty damn, actually pretty spot on for just eyeballing it, right? Um, that would put us in like February. Maybe you consolidate for a couple more months and then you have one last move up to like into the beginning of the summer or something like that to finish off the rally or to finish off the cycle. Something like that makes sense to me. You don't have to top off here, I wanna say, right? You could go up to your 2272, it's possible. You did it the last two times, but again, those were smaller ranges. I, I personally would more expect this range, but you could, you could go up higher, man. This is gonna be, this move is going to happen during Litecoin's breakout of this long phase of accumulation. So who knows what that will do to LTCN? Who knows? It could, it could really do, right? Let, let me just put it in perspective this way, right? This is what you did right here. That's what you did in this box. That's what you did in this box, right? What happens when you're starting at the base of the box and you break through the box, right? If this is what you did in the box, what you gonna do outside the box? <laughs> I think it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be good. I think whatever this was, I think it's gonna be better soon, right? Coming out of it, especially once you break out of this uh, hundred to hundred and twenty dollar range for LTC. But that's a little bit of a ways away, right? Maybe not so immediately to expect, but sometime I would expect. You know, by the end of this year, going into next year, you'll be you'll be seeing the uh, the finishing moves of this next move. Not not of the cycle itself, but something again that would take you between like 88 to 163. But maybe higher, maybe higher. Again, there are there are reasons why you could move higher. There there are boxes to break, places to see, people to meet, other boxes to break, right? LTCN could do a lot, guys. Don't sleep on this one. Um, I don't have anything else I want to say. If you like this video, hit that like button. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this. The daily RSI looks fine. The weekly RSI looks fine. Three hour. The three hour does look like it wants to go down a little bit. And I was saying that at the beginning of the LTCN analysis. I think it could go down a little bit. But that's okay. I don't think it goes below $10, $10 if it even does. Sorry. I don't think it goes below $11. But if it does, maybe just barely below there. And that's, that's all I got, guys. So if you like the video, hit that like button. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you all for being here. Uh, and thank you guys for the patience with the grayscale videos. I know, I know it's been a bit slower as of late, but hopefully in no time at all, we'll be making these G scale videos on the regular again, right? It's just been boring lately, right? It's been boring. been waiting for these moves to look, uh, productive and they just, when they start looking productive, they get deconstructive whenever they, they start to do something, you get a new high. That's, that's when it just fizzles out. Right. But I think that we're, I really do think that we're about to form something more productive, more, more promising of, of follow through. And I, I got nothing else to say, guys. So take care. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.